I want you to go with me again to Acts chapter 16. We're not going to be long. I want the 28th verse of the 16th chapter of the book of Acts. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me. After thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Come on, say it with me again. Have thine own way. Have thine own way. Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me. After thy will. After thy will. While I If you really mean it, just lift your free hand toward heaven and say it one last time. Have thy own way, Lord. Have thy. Thou art the potter. The potter. I am the clay. I will while I am waiting. Oh man. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. But as is my custom, I'd like to ask you, if you would, to just read those words with me again. Those few words, what do they say? Paul cried with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. And since there's nobody here but who? But us, uh, we can read it one final time again. But, but Paul cried with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, for we are the hearers and by faith the doers on today. I have some simple words that I want to speak to you from. Um, on tonight and that is an inside deliverance an inside deliverance and I'm not going to be long at all tonight but I just uh, hope and trust that um, your hearts and minds will revolve around the words that are perched here in this text as they appear here in the book of Acts I thought it was interesting sometime when a preacher is a little unsteady about what he should preach you come in the service and you 
you look for any sign you can get. And uh, though he wasn't anywhere near my chapter, I was happy when I heard the young man say the book of Acts. And I said, well, maybe at least I'm in the, the, the right neighborhood. <laughs> but um, there's some things I think here that are pertinent to us, some things that would be helpful. It's not really a complicated message. Text certainly is not a complicated or unfamiliar text. Uh, most of us know this text. This story has been rehearsed many times in our ears. And it's a story that grants us inspiration. We run here when we are dealing with the throes of life, the complications of life that come uh, out of service to our master. This is a text that oftentimes comfort saints. And in our services, gatherings like this, we find solace and we find great joy in hearing about Paul. And of course, with Paul comes Silas and how God rescued them from a nightmare and, and there was a deliverance from what certainly was impending doom. We should be reminded of everything that goes along with this chapter. Because when we observe scripture, scripture has context, scripture has cotex. And I've learned that uh, it's very important that you don't just grab a verse by itself, but you put everything in setting meditate everything that surrounded it. Sometimes you'll miss something if you don't go back and dig up a little bit. Be reminded about the personage and be reminded about the times. and Be reminded about uh, all of those things that envelop a particular passage of scripture. Principal person we know, although he was not there uh, alone, he had a compatriot that was there with him. But the principal person is Paul. S Silas is there and he has his place, but he's not the principal player, not the principal speaker. And then with that alone, it's good sometimes to know your place, know your role. Sometimes the work of the Lord is, is stymied because we as individual saints refuse to acknowledge where God has placed us. That alone brings discord in the church because we won't acknowledge where God has placed us. And then even if we know we refuse to be satisfied with where God has placed us, we're always lusting for something else, not knowing that if we rest where God has put us, he'll shine out of us than in a place that is displaced for us. I want, I want to be where God wants me to be. Can I get a witness tonight? I don't want to be where God doesn't want me and sometimes we miscast ourselves. Silas wasn't trying to be Paul. Paul wasn't trying to be Silas. Yes, they both were there in that cell and some of us would be mad right now. We'd be fussing right now. Uh, you know, they didn't say enough about me. I was in that prison too. Amen. Paul wasn't the only one praising him. I was praising him. Why, why doesn't the Bible celebrate me? Everybody got their place. And we're effective when we operate in our place. Paul, Paul was the person here that's key. He's the person that speaks. Really the words that are in this verse is not Silas. Now they both were praising together but it was Paul that spoke these words and he spoke these words because it was his assignment. And it was not just his assignment here, it was Paul's assignment all along the way. I wanna tell you tonight, God was preparing him for this place. He was getting him ready for this hour, for this test, for this trial. He was getting him ready for this trying. You know, um, it's important that we as as saints begin to truly understand what sainthood is all about. I know that's kind of a generic statement, but it really isn't. There are a lot of people who saved 
and they're not going to go to hell, but they really don't know why they're saved. They're in here. They're going through the machinations of, of what we're supposed to do, but uh, they really don't know because there's a kind of spiritual buffoonery that's running amok today. <laughs> a lot of deception, a lot of spiritual ignorance that dresses itself up in sophistication. And we buy into it, we buy into it because, because it paints a picture that's not the reality. We celebrate Paul, but, but why do we celebrate Paul? We, we, we celebrate this moment, but, but why do we celebrate this moment? You gotta go back into his life. You gotta go back into his history. And we read about Paul early in Acts. And it's interesting how the Bible introduces him. He, he gets a, what I call a, a sort of a sporadic or spotty introduction. You catch a glimpse of him early but 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 he doesn't come frontal early you hear about him early and I think most of you know where you hear about him he pops up in the text just sort of peeks in and when he peeks in uh, we catch a glimpse of him and what is happening is in that peak in God is developing him oh yeah he's developing him he's he's not in the church yet and that's why you should never discount your days before Jesus. Amen. Amen. Sometimes, you know, we, don't, we think the Lord didn't get with us until we got on his side. But would you believe it if I told you he was on your side before you got on his side? He was there. Somebody ought to praise God for that. Amen. You, you, you ought to be glad he was on your side. Amen. While we were yet sinners. Christ died. Amen. That blood wasn't shed for you after you got saved. That blood was shed before, for you before you got saved. Shed that blood and, and he paid off the debt. Amen. He was just waiting for you to acknowledge the payment. Can I get a witness in here? And some of y'all after you're saved, I'm not going to go real far with that. You're still struggling with the payment. You're trying, you're trying to work off what's already been paid. You're trying to settle. Can I get a witness? We don't believe our own theology sometime. We spend our life after we get saved trying to pay for salvation. You can't pay for salvation. You can only thank God for salvation. Can I get a witness in here? The old account. Y'all remember that song? Down on my knees I was. Settled it all. The old account was settled long ago. That's what all those blood songs are about. Down at the cross where I first saw the light. Look, that's what all those songs are about. It's about the fact uh, that, that God was for us before we were for him. Looking out for us. Watching out for us. And I, I would suggest to every saint sometime you need to go back before you got saved. Don't, don't, don't love what you did, but revisit what you did. And then thank God for covering you, for keeping you. Can I get a witness? Bringing you through. Some of y'all should be dead tonight. But God spared your life. Somebody shout hallelujah somewhere. Paul, Paul, that was his story. He, he was out there, enemy of the church. I, I don't want to dwell there long. Fought the church. We know all of, of Paul's story. We pick up on him. Uh, they're stoning Stephen. That's the first time you pick up on him. First time you learn about Paul. He, he's yet breathing out threats. Got the church in an uproar. <laughs> church is almost underground. Nervous about Paul. Concerned about Paul. He's going everywhere, got letters going from place to place, doing what he's doing. When we first read about him, they're stoning Stephen. And I don't, I don't want to get lost in that. You know what happened. He was there in the crowd peeking out. Amen, holding the cloaks of those that stoned Stephen, celebrating his horrific mission. And then he sort of backs up. You don't see Paul for a while. Peter still on the stage. Peter's the one that 
preached that opening message. The church is established with Peter preaching the message. Book of Acts is interesting. Amen. If you read Acts, amen, you know we say Acts of the Apostles, but it's not really the Acts of the Apostles. It's the Acts of the Holy Ghost. And, and God is waiting again for the church to reawaken to the fact that it's the Holy Ghost that ought to be acting and not us. Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Holy Ghost. Can I get a witness? Holy Ghost that ought to be working and not us. When we climb up on this pulpit and sing, and when we do our dances and our gyrations on the floor, when the preachers get up here in the pulpit to preach, when, when you who are serving are serving, wherever you're serving, you need to remember that it ought to be the Holy Ghost shining and not you. Not our time to shine. Not our. Can I get some help in here? And one thing I'm just trying to punch out of us and punch out of us. I told uh, some leaders the other day, sometimes I wish we would just sit down. Sit down. Nobody in this room, I'm going to say something. Nobody in this room, I was talking to somebody. And uh, one person did get on my nerves this week. One person. One person. They're not here tonight, so, so you can relax and enjoy the rest of the service. And one person got my nerves and, 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 and what, 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 uh, they was doing too much. They were doing it in my mind. I didn't say it. I want to say, get somewhere and sit down. Amen. We need to learn how to sit down. Sometimes sometime we want to be seen and we're getting in God's way. God, God wants to get in. But we got every road blocked. Because we're trying to be seen. What if the church step back and say, God, do your thing? Yeah. God to come in and have his way. So Acts is Acts about that. Acts, Acts, the Holy Ghost is rolling. Rolling them in, rolling them out. And if you don't learn anything uh, from the book of Acts, if you want to play with the, with the name of the book, everybody got a part in the book. But we're not the director. We don't run the play. God runs the play. You don't tell how God how long your role is. God already wrote it in the script. And before you get an attitude, you ought to just be glad I'm in the program. I wish I had some help. Can I get a witness in here? Somebody don't get up. Just, just take two seconds and thank God for whatever part he got you playing. Whatever role. Whatever role, whatever role, I haven't had you bother your neighbor. Tell your neighbor real quick, you may as well go ahead and praise him because you don't deserve no role. You shouldn't be doing anything. You shouldn't even be here tonight. So whatever you got to do, you ought to give him the glory and the praise. Glory and Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thankful for what I got to do. Can I get a witness? Thankful for whatever God has assigned me. Acts is about that. Paul is there. I'm going to be through in about 10 to 12 minutes. Paul is there. Peeks out. Peeks out. Then he goes back. God deals with Peter. And Peter's the key role player. You know, Peter preaches the inaugural message of the church. Peter, amen, is the one. If you go in Peter's history, we won't go there. Peter walked on water. Y'all remember that? Yes. Peter's the one that, that gave that divine revelation and said, Thou art the Christ, Son of the living God. Peter who knew who Jesus was. Can I get a witness there? Peter was up in the Mount of Transfiguration. Didn't, wasn't he there? Saw Jesus when he met up with Moses and Elijah. Stood there and observed everything that was going. Peter was the one when everybody else said they were going to leave. He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Good God Almighty. Thou hast the words of eternal life. Peter was pivotal. Preached that message. And, and he's the one. Who, somebody talked about it the other day when they went up to the temple with John. And that man was sitting there. It was Peter that turned to him. Said, silver and gold have I none. Amen. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Lord have mercy. He was there. All these great things happened. He preached a message. 3,000 people got saved. 
You know, most of us, you can't do nothing with us if three people get saved. Three's one night, three souls come in. Oh, I, I'm going to get in trouble. We're on Facebook posting it. I preached tonight and three people got saved. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. But, but Peter them had real anointing. See, when you got the real anointing, you ain't got to advertise it. The anointing to advertise itself. Can I get a witness in here? They were so anointed until they didn't have to make a show. They just walked by sick people and their shadow. Can I get a witness? Not a show. They were anointed. Not trying to be seen, they were anointed. And just let me tell every preacher, young preacher, you don't have to politic and pass out cards. You don't have to put your resume on Facebook and say I'm available. God knows you're available. And when the time is right, God will send you out. You don't have to put yourself on somebody's heart. The Holy Ghost is real. Can I get a witness in here? Sometimes we got to understand this, this thing. Acts gives that. I'm not going to be long. Acts paints that picture. Let God act. Let the spirit move. Hello, somebody. Give God a chance to develop you. Give God a chance to mature you. Give God a chance to place you. Peter worked, Peter served, and, and then, then it's almost like Peter evaporates. Book turns, and, 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 and y'all know what happened. Hey Amen. Here comes Paul again, still doing his thing, but now God is, is getting ready to save him. God is <laughs> getting ready now to redeem him. He spaded the ground back then. Back then when? Back when he was peeking through the crowd, looking out at them stone Stephen. You know that story, I'm gonna get lost there. He stoned, when they stoned Stephen, I've, I've said it several times, Peter, I, uh, to Paul I believe was impacted by the stoning of Stephen. Never saw nothing like that. And in my mind, I believe, I believe that, 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 that he thought Stephen was looking at him. And they were stoned in my mind. I think he, he thought he was looking at him. Paul was looking at Stephen. And you know what? Stephen was a Christian. He wasn't like some of us. You hit me, I'm going to hit you back. You curse me, I'm going to curse you back. That Stephen was, was like Jesus and, and opened up his mouth. Prayed the same prayer that Christ prayed and asked God to forgive them. You can't get in the way of God if you ain't got a forgiving spirit. Unforgiveness will plug you up. Can I get a witness in here? And, 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 and he saw him when he uttered those words. And he saw him when he looked beyond him and said, I see Jesus standing up where? On the right hand of the throne of God. I believe he was affected. He was never the same again. Everywhere he went, it was in the back of his mind. How many know God knows how to save you? God knows how to set you up. Can I get a witness? God starts saving you before you get saved. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. God gets you tired of sin while you're still sinning. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Because some of y'all been there. You were still in the tavern, but, but the whiskey didn't taste good no more. You was running with the women. Y'all don't want to talk, but it wasn't fun anymore. God knows how to save you. And he saves uh, Paul, Paul, Paul was impacted. Now you get to, to Acts uh, uh, 9 and now he gets uh, converted. And, and we know that story. God arrests him. Uh, can I have about seven more minutes? God, God arrests him. He arrests him. Thank God on the, on the road to Damascus. We all know about that. Going down to mess up another church meeting. And he's headed down there and, and he's accosted 
personally by Jesus. I, I'm longing for the day when, 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 when prayer room workers will stop claiming souls for themselves. I'm longing, longing, longing. Because you prayed with somebody don't mean you gave them the Holy Ghost. Only God can give the Holy Ghost. And while I'm on it, all you faith healers, your hands didn't heal nobody. It was the God that got in your hand. I'm in the wrong church. Can I get a witness in here? This help everybody real quick. Tell them, get on over yourself. Get on over. This guy, look back at him. Say, look at me. Tell them, I don't care what great thing you did in God. You didn't do it on your own. God did it through you. And you better watch yourself. Because you'll get up like Samson and shake yourself. Your anointing will be gone. You better learn how to give God all the glory. Give him all the glory. Somebody do it right now. Wave your hand and say, God, I give you all the glory. While I'm on it, give him glory for your job. You didn't give yourself the job. God gave you the job. Give him glory for the money the man of God talked about. You didn't give the money. You don't deserve the money. God gave you the money. And while you're at that, thank God for your health. Because God is the one that sustains and keeps you together. God gets the glory. Get the praise. Get the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to run on. Hallelujah. But now give God glory for something you can't tell nobody about. Thank God for something he got you out of. You shouldn't have come out of. Give God a place for a way he made. Way shouldn't have been made, but it did it anyhow. Paul, Paul, Paul. Holy Ghost arrested him and brought him out and getting ready to close, delivered him and and, 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 and you know what happened. God situated his transition. God situated his salvation. And knocked him down from the back of his chariot. Humbled him. And, 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 and God, Jesus spoke to him. You know that? Spoke to him emphatically and, and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And told him it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And, and let him know your battle is futile and your efforts are futile you can you can attack my church but you can't kill my church you can, you can rough it up hello somebody amen i'm in my church the church is my body these are my people and, and i already spoke over them and said no weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper and, and so you're kicking against the press you say what you need to do is Get yourself together. You know, he asked, who art thou, Lord? You know that story. And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. And you, it's time for you to get yourself together. I got a claim on your life. And, and there's some glory I got to get out of your life. I want you to get yourself together. Go on down into the city. Go down into the city of Damascus. I've changed your mission. I've changed your direction. I've changed your purpose. And when you get there, go to a a street, the Bible is, Bible got a sense of humor. Go to a street called Straight Street. So I can straighten out your crooked ways. Go down to Straight Street. Look up a little sanctified preacher by the name of Ananias. And Ananias going to tell you what, what you must do to be saved. Amen. Because I'm a God. I use human agency. Human agency is always a part of my process. Faith cometh by hearing by. How shall they hear without what? Without a preacher. You got to have a preacher. Hello, somebody. Not just to get saved. You got to have a preacher to stay saved. Amen. Amen. You got to come out of your home church. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Amen. I challenge some of some of my members, some of my leaders, we want to be careful. You, you, I know you can read the word and you're sophisticated, but you still need a fresh word. You need the word, y'all don't like this, that come from the mouth of the man or woman of God. You need to hear that inspired word. 
Can I get a witness in here? Takes the word and applies it to your heart. And, 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 and he needed to go by Ananias. Went down there, heard the gospel. Long story short, he was baptized in Jesus' name. It's in the text. He got the Holy Ghost speaking, speaking in tongues. Because Ananias, he laid his hands on him. Oh, he doesn't speak directly, but later on you see him speaking and talking about what God did for him. Praise God. But then there's something interesting as I prepare to close this message. We, we kind of run through his conversion and we don't pick up on everything because it picks, I believe it picks to the position, speaks to the position of the church today because the church today, not you, it's a pampered church. The church today, the church today coddles weakness church church today we 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 breed weak entitled saints the church church today has the image of god that that once i get saved everything is supposed to fall in place and everything is supposed to line up for me and and so we we create a a, a generation of miscreants and and disgrunts and and that's why so many saints act so ugly because, because, because they're frustrated because they don't get what, what false doctrine has told them that they are entitled to. We read through the scripture. We only want to read blessing scriptures. We only want to read prosperity scripture. Don't get me twisted. I like blessing. I like prosperity. Hello, can I, can I, get, a, can I get a witness in here? But we skip through scriptures. We cherry pick scriptures. Oh, I'm going to go there. Your favorite television preacher. He cherry picks scriptures. Because he wants to play with your mind. Can I get a witness in here? And it makes you stunted in your growth. And, and you never mature in God. And so when the storm comes, you're bowled over. Amen. Because they never tell you after you have suffered a while. After after oh i wish i could talk here after your neighbor your neighbor get it later but tell your neighbor after after they'll figure it out on the way home look to the other side tell them after 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 we we everybody we just want before y'all ain't saying nothing we want right now we want instantaneous can i get a witness amen and sometimes we deny our reality we deny the facts of life. And can I give you all a fact right now? Yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you ain't persecuted, you ain't living right. You ain't going through. You ain't living right. If somebody ain't on your back, if the demons aren't bothering you, it means the devil said you ain't worth it. I don't know about y'all, but I want to be worth it. I want the devil to get nervous when I come around. I want demons to back up when I come into the room. Matter of fact, I want my name not just in the Lamb's book of life. I want my name down in the pit of hell. I want the devil to know me by name. And when I come around, I want him to get nervous and say, these who have turned the world upside down have come here also somebody clap your hand give god a praise right now give him a praise you may be seated but tell your now tell your neighbor i'm going through because i'm dangerous tell him. y'all didn't say it say it another time say say i'm going through because i'm dangerous I'm going through because i'm a threat to the devil i'm going through because everywhere i go i shake stuff up Demons have to scramble when I come up. Uh, uh, Armed and dangerous. Um, you may be seated. I got to slow down for a moment. Just tell yourself, sitting down, I'm armed and dangerous. I'm armed and dangerous. Armed and dangerous. Armed and dangerous. Uh, I'm empowered, I'm enabled, armed and dangerous. I, I'm armed with that name that is above every other name. That name to which every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. I'm armed. I'm armed, I'm armed. 
Somebody test the name right now and just shout Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Mm. Say it one more time. Jesus. Tap, tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say, neighbor, the preacher told me to tell you. The last time you just said Jesus, he saw an army of angels running to your house. Last time you said Jesus. Last time you said Jesus. Last time. Last time. Can I get a witness in here? So, so, somebody shout glory and hallelujah. Shout glory. You got to get past. Get past. You may be seated. Give me just a few more moments. Get past this tinsel religion. This weak religion. Get past being so passive. Get past being so weak. Don't say nothing right now. Look around you. Look for the weak ones. Look for the flowery saints. I just want everything to be good. That's why I can't stay at my church. Running from church to church because I want everything to be good. I want a preacher that's going to tell me everything is good all the time. And that's why I can't get still. I want somebody to make the troubles go away. That's why I'm a high maintenance saint in the church. Pastor can't have no peace because I'm, I'm in the line every night. I'm in the office every day because I want him to fan the troubles away. When are you going to understand that it's the troubles that's making you? You can't get better till you have some trouble. You can't grow up till you have some difficulty. You can't learn faith until you're in a place where you can't fix it yourself. Can I get a witness in here? You, know, you don't know what you signed up for. We trick you sometime and we preach so flowery and so sweet until some of you got tricked up in here and duped up in here and thought everything was good. But you know, sometimes we, we decry those old preachers, but, but we need some of them back today. Some of them that, that'll get in our face when we're crying and say, shut up. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. I, I upset somebody. Can I talk for a minute? I said, Ekash upset somebody the other day when I, I told them, I think I was in a session, they came to me afterward. They meant well. And, they, and I, I, I talked about the fact that, that we have become uh, so cathartic in our age. And, 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 I, and I understand that. I, I'm not an ignorant man. I, we need the social worker. We need the psychologist. We, we, got, a, we got a counseling office here in the church. But, but, but person with credentials running the business they're here in the church and they're counseling people there's a place for that there's a place for catharsis but 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 sometimes you know as always we we never have balance we we discovered catharsis and and that's why you know the preacher talked the other night we go to all these conferences and and i don't want to lose nobody stay with me just just understand just understand you need these sessions the brothers need them the brothers you know we got our sessions where we go and weep and cry and then the women the women go and and get loose y'all ain't saying nothing woman woman thou art loose that's got its place amen i know you've been abused and and mistreated by by us horrific men y'all ain't saying nothing I, I understand that i understand that but and you need to be loose because abuse is real mistreatment is real hello somebody I'm not belittling any of those situations. All, all I want to know is how many times you got to be loose. How many times? How many? How many times? Hello. I thought y'all told me to the utmost, Jesus said. So, sooner or later, sooner or later, look at your neighbor, Bishop Dawson. We were talking about that the other day. Look at your neighbor. Sooner, say, sooner or later, you need to get delivered up in here. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. We don't need to sit around in a circle talking about deliverance every convention every conference i need to go to one conference and get set free and then come back to the next conference and help set free somebody else you can't y'all your neighbor ain't gonna like me tell your neighbor you can't free me if you still a slave you can't you can't you can't get me out if you still bound somebody got to be free and y'all told me when I got saved, he who the Son hath made free is free indeed. Open your mouth and say, I'm free tonight. Look at
touch somebody and say, I'm free. Say, tell them you can stay bound if you want to. Say, but tonight I'm going to celebrate my deliverance. I'm going to celebrate my freedom. He brought me out of the miry clay. Set my feet. I wish somebody was happy about being free. God saved me. Why should I be bound? God saved me. Who saved tonight? He saved me so I wouldn't be bound. He saved me so I can shake off the shackles. You have more power than you think. You can shake off depression. Look at your neighbor. Say, shake it off. You don't have to have all the answers. Some of those old songs told us, Father Long will know all about it. Father Long will understand why. Cheer up, my brother. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it. Oh, by and by. I'm going to celebrate God right now. This day. This hour. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. Eka, you may be seated. You may be seated. I wish I had somebody with the sign. Anybody got the power? Point your finger at your neighbor. You ain't got to touch him. Say, I command you to be free right now. In the name of Jesus. I lift that burden off of you. I lift that curse off of you. I rebuke the spirit of sadness. I bind the demon of heaviness. Glory! Glory. 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 Look what we do. Got to close right now. Ebaya! Come on Sunday. Got to close right now. He ministered to Saul. Got nine minutes and 14 seconds. Minister to him. Minister to him. Ananias ministered to him. Didn't sugar pussy it. Didn't sugar coat it. He ministered to him. He was afraid, but the Lord told him, minister to him. And tell him, tell Paul, go thy way, for he's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. But I never hear people read the next verse. He said, because I'm going to show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Can I get a witness in here? All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Can I get a witness in here? If any man come unto me, he must deny himself daily take up his cross follow after me I wish I had somebody that would help me preach tonight shake your neighbor's hand and say I don't know about you I tell him I heard about the price and, and I counted up the cost say but I've decided to follow Jesus can I get a witness in here can somebody help me? Would you tell another neighbor? Say, I've decided to, to follow Jesus. No turning back. No, no turn the cross before me. The world behind me. No turning back. Just say no turning back. I'm going all the way with Jesus. Can I get a witness in here? I've got to make this journey. I've got to make this fight. I wish we would sing some of those old songs. I'm not trying to live in the past, but look like a hear a song in my ear that said somehow. Y'all ain't going to help me. Somehow. Will you help me preach for a minute? Reach over and shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I didn't come here to celebrate my weakness tonight. I didn't come here to, to get a pass on testing trials. Tell them I came here to get an injection of Holy Ghost inspiration. 
to tell them I made up in my mind somehow I got to make this journey somehow if you're a real human look at your neighbor and say I got Satan on the track he tried to turn me back tell him but I got to make this journey I got ow got to make it somehow my time is up tonight if I had time I'd walk you thank God through the scripture I try to take you across the, the topography of the Bible if I had time I'd walk you from Acts 9 thank God down to Acts 16 and I tell you pause ups and downs and, and pause in and out but, but can I just tell you Paul's testimony he wrote thank God as I get ready to close up he wrote to the church at Corinth and he said I want you to know my life story he said I was beaten with rods three times I was stoned once and, and I was shipwrecked three times I spent a day and a night thank God on the open sea I've been on many journeys I've faced dangers thank God from rivers and robbers and my people and Gentiles I faced dangers thank God in the city in the desert on the sea and from false brothers and false sisters I faced her thank God these dangers with hard work and heavy labor many sleepless nights hunger and thirst often without food I wish I had somebody to shout glory with me he said I've been in the cold thank God without enough clothes I, I, that was Paul's testimony but I wonder tonight is there somebody that came to the midwinter's convention and you've been going through some, some tests and some trials I wish I had just a few saints for whom life has not been easy and if that's your testimony look at your neighbor and say hey neighbor life ain't been easy for me tell them I've had to cry many days I've had many troubles I wish I had somebody to help me preach reach over and grab somebody's hand and say I don't know about you but the road is rough and the going's been tough and the hills have been hard to climb but I started out Somebody shout glory. Tell your neighbor I started out a long time ago. Point at your head and say there's no doubt in my mind. I decided to make Jesus my choice. Somebody help me preach. I got to close. You know the story of Acts chapter 16. Paul, thank God and Silas, they got locked up in jail. They had treaded on the devil's territory. They had cast out demons. The woman with a spirit of divination, they cast that demon out and everybody in Philippi thank God was angry with them and I heard the Bible say when they gave him a good whooping they took him and put him in the jail can I get a witness in here somebody shout glory can I get me a Paul somewhere can I get me a Silas somewhere they took Paul and they took Silas somebody help me lock him up they locked him up thank God in the dungeon we got the right jail put him in the dungeon don't just put him in a front jail put him somewhere in a back jail locked up their hands locked up their feet can I get a witness put him in maximum security couldn't no light shine in couldn't no sun get in oh when you help me preach tonight look at your neighbor and say hey neighbor have you ever been in a jail have you ever been in a place where you were locked down and locked up thank God locked out 
I heard the Bible say uh, they stayed there all day long. Uh, the jail keeper uh, was out keeping watch, uh, but they were locked up in the dungeon. Uh, but at midnight, uh, Somebody help me preach. Open your mouth and say at midnight. Oh, Paul and Silas, they prayed and they sang praises unto God. How many know tonight? You can praise him until something happened. You can praise him until something comes shows up. You can praise him until God get in it. Oh, they prayed and they praised God. Their hands were in stocks. Their feet were in stocks. They were constrained by the chains. But oh, they still said, I will bless the Lord all time and his praise shall continually be in my mouth they pray them I say they praise him until something happened they pray them until the thunder began to rumble they pray them until the lightning begin to flicker they pray them until the sound glory look at your neighbor and say I dare you to praise him until something happens I dare you to praise him yes I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to close. It prayed them until the chains came loose. Prayed them until the shackles came off their feet. Prayed them until the doors of the jail opened up. Praised them. They praised them. They praised him. Oh, the whole prison got shook up. You can praise him and shake up your neighborhood. You can praise him and shake up your job. They praised him. Somebody take 10 seconds. Give God a real praise. Where is the jailer? Where is the jailer? Where is the jailer? I see the jailer. He got up out his bed. Can I have 30 seconds? He got up out his bed. He realized what had happened. An earthquake had visited. Thank God the jail. It didn't shake up the city. It was a targeted phrase. And a targeted earthquake. It's shook up the jail can I get a witness and the Bible tell me it was all over for him cause the law of that time was if you had a prisoner and the prisoner escaped you were going to get killed and I saw him pick up his sword he was about to kill himself somebody shout glory about to drive the edge of the sword thank God through his heart but before he got a chance to kill himself Paul 
prepared out to prison and said do thyself no harm because we are still here I wish I had me a praying church your neighbor get it when they head home tonight tell your neighbor I'm still here y'all don't get it after a while I'm still here have you ever thought about it isn't it strange that after the change came off isn't it strange that after after the shackles came off their feet and hands isn't it strange after the doors flung open they could have walked out but they stayed in the jail if they had a left the jailer would have died but they say we're still right here we've learned that I don't have to get out to be free I can praise him oh, somebody help me somebody help me look at your neighbor and say neighbor I'm still going through but yet I'm free I'm still in the dungeon but yet I'm free and I'm gonna praise him right where I am. God bless you tonight. You may be seated.
gotta go. But I want everybody to hear the testimony of a real saint. I want you to shake four hands around you. Put a soldier's smile on your face and tell everybody, I'm in it, but I'm free. told me to tell somebody you got to learn how to praise me in constricted places if you can't go forward if you can't go backward if you can't go sideward yourself right See, your, your neighbor don't understand you. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. 
But just so your neighbor understands, say, neighbor, if you don't give me room to praise him, tell him, if you don't move over any, tell him that's all right. I know how to give him a constricted praise. I'll just use the space I have. I'll just... Show your neighbor how to use the space you got. I can I can shout in a tight space. Wow! I can praise. Who wants to be saved tonight? This is the altar call. Hold your place for just a moment if you can. Where Where's that man? Mm -hmm. Who? Where's that man? Where's that woman? Where's that boy? Where's that girl? Where are you tonight? Last call. Well, go ahead and say it. Thank you. Somebody say an inside deliverance. Tell your neighbor this right quick. Say, say, I done pulled one on the devil. He thinks I'm waiting for deliverance. But he don't know I already been delivered. at home with you. Open your mouth right now and say, I'm already delivered. Say it another time. I'm already delivered. Act like you a preacher. Go down in your belly and say, I'm already delivered. 